it influenced the performance more than I anticipated it uh, to do so. That makes sense. Um, once once all of that makeup went on, people reacted and responded to me differently on set, and uh, and I, I wasn't anticipating that. I, I didn't necessarily think that that would help inform anything, but it did, because people naturally wanted to be separate from me, and I, I was off-putting, and uh, so organically, I just kind of <laughs> stayed in character because I didn't really have any choice because no one wanted to talk to me. Um, um, and in terms of in terms of just the the technical aspect of it, there was I was never aware of it. I was never conscious of of damaging it or or you know that would that was. It just felt like it was a part of who I was at that point. Thank you. The gentleman here. Yeah, hi. A question to see to Noble Thought from Star Plus Features. Uh, how much did DuPont get under your skin when you were filming? And was it easy to shake off when you finished? Uh, a lot and no. <laughs> uh, it, it And it's something that I still think about. Um, it, the whole experience, what I felt like we as a group went to Pittsburgh to film this and without sounding too pretentious I feel like we all disappeared for a while and um, and then a few months later we all emerged from this experience together and and I don't think it was so much a matter of shaking it off I think it I still talk to Channing and Mark about the experience and it's very present within all of us. I think we all felt there was a great responsibility to the people involved um, and to Bennett, um, it's just to the story and to the world. So I don't think that that has left any of us. Um, maybe it's not something that I think about every hour, but it's, it's very present um, because I, I feel like we, it was immersive and, and we, we, we all took it very seriously. Thank you. There's a gentleman, yes, this gentleman here, and then the gentleman way at the back. You, you uh, sir, yes. Mr. Miller, I don't know how much the, 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 make, the makeup was exaggerated or how loyal it was to the Pons look, but that beak of the nose of his uh, seemed to me like the American Falcon sort of personified. And I was wondering whether there was this um, uh, undercurrent intentionally placed in the film regarding how America, American upper class or the conglomerates, if you, if you like, uh, sort of tries to own certain aspects of sports, uh, especially in the Olympics where America is a, a top power. Was that like an issue that you were interested in when, when writing the script? Yeah. Um... Part of what attracted me to the story was that it was a true story, and yet it it had um, an allegorical quality to it. You know, it had a, a metaphorical qualities, and in a way that is almost too perfect. There's so many things that just coincided with what one might have written uh, had one approached this as a, a fictional exercise from the beginning, in, including what you pointed out. But the the nose is is awfully close to a replica. Um, the irony that he referred to himself as the Golden Eagle of America. Um, in speech, in writing, uh, on you know his jerseys, on his trophies, um, is comical and allegorical. But many, many, many elements I thought of the story just naturally um, fulfilled that same kind of thing, you know, like within this tiny little weird story of these three men are big themes like of 
wealth and class and entitlement and exceptionalism and all like that. But as a as a film, you know, I was attracted to that. You acknowledge that it's there, but then put that aside and 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 not try to uh, make a statement or have any kind of conclusion about these things. But uh, examine these dynamics at work, where you you have a person doing what perhaps is a trend, you know, uh, in the, in the society that has. Um, such disparity in classes and things like that. 